Hi, my name is Sue Swing with St. Matthew's Church. Do you believe in miracles? Have you been affected by a miracle? Or have you heard the story of a significant event that happened to someone else? And were you happy for them? Or maybe cynical? In chapter 21 of We Make the Road by Walking, Brian McLaren talks about the different ways that we can respond to a miracle story. In fact, in the Gospel of Mark, people witness Jesus rebuking an unclean spirit with such intensity that the spirit comes out of the man it had been tormenting. The people respond with wonder and amazement. But later on, there are also times they question and even seek to trap Jesus for performing a miracle on the Sabbath. We are similar today. We can be inspired or suspicious of miracle stories. And one of our most common responses to the story of a possible miracle is to wear the hat of the scientist. We treat the information like a hypothesis to be proven. The event is suspect unless there's some good, hard evidence. We have to collect enough data until it adds up to something that we can understand. Otherwise, forget it. It's just good luck or a coincidence. We choose to be suspicious because these kinds of things just don't happen to us or to anyone. It's nonsense. And the accumulation of the data continues until our logical mind has decided for us that this is all just wishful, fanciful thinking. But when we close our sense of wonder and imagination in our relationship with God, there is a danger that we shut the door to possibility. We confine God to a space that is the size of our personal knowledge with dimensions limited by how far we are willing to go. These walls may feel safe and secure, but without realizing it, we can become dependent on our false sense of control. But is this God something we contain and control? You know, we always have a choice in how we see things in this adventure with Jesus. Brian McLaren shares that in the Bible, perhaps the stories of Jesus' miracles are just meant to shake up our normal assumptions, inspire our imagination about the present and the future, and make it possible for us to see something we couldn't see before. That by challenging us to consider impossible possibilities, these stories can even stretch our imagination to play a new role in creating possibilities for the world of tomorrow. The question is no longer, did this really happen? Or how did this happen? But what happens to us when we imagine miracles happening? Our family of four had coronavirus in November and we've all recovered. That's not a miracle, right? Statistics show that the majority of people are recovering. But in our situation, we do feel like we glimpsed a little bit of a miracle. Because my husband, Barry, has had lung disease for over 10 years. He uses oxygen, and when he was diagnosed years ago, he had already lost over 60% of his lung capacity, and that is not recoverable. He's certainly considered high risk, and we expected the worst. But Barry recovered. He recovered from the coronavirus, beating the odds at the very least and experiencing some kind of miraculous healing if we choose to entertain the possibility that it can happen that way. Now, I don't know for sure if we have just lived through a miracle. What I do know is that six weeks of being sick together wasn't necessarily a beautiful family experience of togetherness. But in that time, I felt the presence of heartfelt prayer and concern from many people. We were nourished by meals from family and friends. I gained patience. I have renewed and joyful appreciation for my sense of smell and taste. And you know, there's increased respect for my husband who did not complain and approached the whole thing without fear. All of these things felt like miracles to me, even before his physical wellness was reestablished. What happened along the way as part of this journey has been significant and wonderful. So maybe it's not about the possible miracle or the big event 
or the desired outcome in our lives. It's about what happens on the way and how we live moving forward. You know, maybe it's about using our God-given imagination to look into the eyes of Jesus and hear him say, does it really matter how I am doing this? This does not depend on you. My love for you is real. I have overcome the world and I am enough. Please continue the conversation with us on Zoom this Sunday at 10 a.m. There are no right or wrong answers and everyone is always welcome. Mm -hmm.